What's going on, babe? Hey, babe. How was your day? It was actually pretty productive. Happy to be home. Good. You know, we got a game today. Uh -huh. Honey, the little roughs around the edges. I mean, I'm saying I've been working all night, taking care of business, getting to the... You know what? I don't even want to talk about it. I got you. I'm not trying to be out here looking like a dusty dusty, and that's why I'm excited to have T. Chanley as a sponsor of today's video. They helped me start and maintain my skincare routine by making the entire process uncomplicated. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend you start with their level one system, which come with all of the basics, a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin, a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20, because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun, and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My favorite part about Teach Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. In addition to amazing skin, members of Teach Hanley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price and the ability to customize your box. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers an amazing deal. Just click the first link in the description. You'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Click the link and get started today. We're taking care of ourselves. Self-care, fellas, is the first step to be able to get to that bag, to take care of business, and be on top of things and level up in every aspect of your life. Feel the tease, my friends. Good morning. How is take, everybody doing? Gosh, what Anton you chose about? violence this morning. How are you guys? Oh my god, all right. <laughs> Is that how we go start? Looks like we might have a solo show today. Do I need to switch the cameras around, ma'am? Do y'all hear this? Do y'all hear this? Oh, I'm asking you. I wasn't like, y'all see how you treat me? I'm asking, and all I said was good morning. You sure that's all you said? That, that's all I said. You know, I can rewind the tape live, right? What else did I say? You said I chose violence. You did a one in a whole soliloquy. Yeah, after I said good hard. morning, I don't, I'm not sure what happened. How, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. My life is absolutely awesome. Mine is too. Act like it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. <laughs> uh... <laughs> wow. You better act like it. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. Uh, welcome to the Millionaire Morning Show. I crossed the milestone today as far as subscribers. And you know what's so funny, Rita? I actually, we're not going to tell them the number, but I actually wanted to um, post it on a post publicly, but I see so many people whining about me not posting my subscribers. So you said no. So I just do it. No, it's almost like a troll at this point, but I reached a milestone She's today. So <laughs> I reached a milestone today and, uh, you know, subscribers don't even mean anything now. It's almost like a plaque type of thing, but then at the same time, it's like, you know, and now what? Yeah. It's almost like a stunt. And so, you know, I'd prefer for people to spend more time focused on the content and the things that actually matter instead of the stuff that's just for show and all of that. But um, very interesting. Woke up this morning, was like, yo, I see that. Um, I see that's popping and all of that. And so, you know, life is absolutely good and, and great and everything like that. Um, what about you? How was your day yesterday? How's your day this morning? How's things going with you? Yesterday was, it was good. It was a little rough towards the end of the night. My back was hurting really, really bad. But aside from that, it was a good day. Let me help you out, bro. There you go. Thank you. Um, congratulations to your milestone. Thank Maybe you. Maybe I'll take you to get a drink this evening. No, listen, Anton is 100% engulfed in work and focusing. Honestly, like, the only thing I do, even when I go out, is work. Yeah, that's not good. Even when I'm out in the streets, I'm on the phone, I'm taking care of business, I'm doing deals, I'm putting things in place, I'm trying to get certain people hired for certain things, and um, I'm just 100% dedicated to the grind. I'm not focused on anything outside of that. Everything else is just, uh, you know, 
Yeah, uh, that's a, a problem. How is that a problem? Why do you? Why is that a problem? Because you need to have balance, like. Yeah, my my. Did you see my accounts? They're balanced. <laughs> yes, but you need to have. <laughs> They're balance balanced in your mind, body, and soul as well. And if you just constantly, constantly working, I know you're gonna say, "No, I'm not. I'm not." But you will get burned out. And I have seen you in that place before. I don't get burned out. I don't get burned out. So you don't get burned out like the average person does. But I know when you are burned out and when you have had enough. When am I burned out? That doesn't even make any sense. When your attitude is bad <laughs> and you are extra tired. That is an opinion, and ma'am. Because my attitude bothers don't be bad. you. Everything You're don't easily me. aggravated. <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead. Get your energy off. You I mean, I'm just, I wasn't going to say, but you pushed me to say it. You asked me. Like, I was just going to leave it at that, that I know when you burnt out. But so you asked people, me to say it. So, so if people not doing what they're supposed to do, and I get aggravated about it, I'm burned out. No, no, no. It's not that people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. It just be like the little stuff. Like the other day. <laughs> <laughs> what? You were so mad because I, I didn't plug your computer back up. What? I, Rita, I never even, I never, I don't remember saying nothing to you about no computer not being plugged yes, up. Yes, you did. It was, it so was I didn't, there on that table. First of all, I asked you if I could unplug oh, it. Oh, the work computer. Said, I asked you if I could unplug it. And yes. you said yes. And you unplugged it. And I unplugged it. Right. So then I did what I had to do. Uh-huh. And then I was it. Like, I didn't, I mean, I guess maybe it's my fault that I didn't plug it back up. I wasn't but mad, though. I did Oh, yeah. I wasn't mad. Yeah, I just yeah, simply said, yo. <laughs> That's not what you going? said. You, you did not say yo nothing. <laughs> I was, as a matter of fact, I was in our room and I heard you out here um, saying stuff. <laughs> That's not true. That's very true. I was just like, so yo, y'all unplug computers back up? Whatever. That's, That's what exactly what I you said. was like, oh, she didn't even plug my computer back up. Yeah, really? That don't even sound like me. Honey, that is so <laughs> you. That is exactly what you said. That, even that sound is like exactly me. what you said. That don't even sound like me. Uh, uh, like, okay, first of all, so you saying you can unplug whatever it is that you were doing and then you don't see that other plug that's laying out on the floor right there? That's A. But I ain't make no big deal. I never came to you or nothing. And secondly, I just was like, because <laughs> this is so cap. This is so cap, yo. You know, like I, I ain't say, got time for I this. know. <laughs> this is so corny. I know. It's okay. Hey, you want to go ahead and do that stuff real quick so we can get on with the show? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to show that merch, too. Yes. Because uh, I might have a new merch partner. That's from, uh, this is from them. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's kind of personal. Is but... this from him? Mm-hmm. So this is a t-shirt brand called Quotes and Notes, Q-N-N to be exact. So it's a t-shirt, but it's not your typical t-shirt because look at the sleeves. Here, you're going to have to do it. So I got to give them the number first. I got to give them the information. This is who it's from. You covering it at the bottom. Okay, let me make sure I get that right. Damn. There we go. Y'all can go ahead and contact them on their Instagram, Facebook, Amazon, all of that. That's the phone number, all of that. So go ahead. Um, this is a, the T-shirt, but it's look at the sleeves. It has like a, it's not like a regular T-shirt. It's it's pretty sweet. It's like a fitted sleeve, I guess, kind of T-shirt, and it's great quality. It's super um, like thick, and the front is kind of like a little short and long in the back. I don't know if y'all can see that. Yeah, there we go. So check them out. They are a Detroit-based company. And then we have some new stuff from, his name is Torian Watson. He is a Patreon member, and he owns Epic Stitch and Print. You can find them on Facebook, and I don't know about Inst just Facebook, I guess. But here's the email and all of that stuff. Anton, you want to show that? And here is the merchandise. What am I showing? So the card at the top. I'm only showing the, the card. Email. I mean, that's where the email and stuff is at. Where are they located? Uh, Mrs. Tup Tupelo. Is that Mississippi? I don't know. 
Tupelo or something. Yeah, they're pretty dope, though. Hold on, let me see if I can get that in there. There we go. That's the information. That's the phone number. Y'all gonna have to. Y'all gonna want to rewind this and see this once y'all. Uh, this is super duper dope. It's, so go it's ahead. so nice. So first we have AntonDaniels.com. That's Hoodie. sick. That's the sick. Hoodie. Took the whole logo and made right? made the finesse from it. Then we have. The Lapeef Network hoodie. Yo, that hoodie, them colors is out of control. Hold on, you got to show that. It's this dope. mug is sick. And the material, it's like a, like, it's a so raised dope. Raised embroidery. Raised embroidery. This mug is dope. And then we also have. All of this stuff is going to go on my new website for the merch. This one. Got the Lapeef Let's Talk hoodie. That mug is dope. The raised embroidery. This mug is sick, 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 sick. Yeah, boy. Oh, yep, that's it. Is that it? That's they sent it. me a whole box of stuff too. Yeah, it's like a couple of each one. So shout out to you. I will be reaching out to you personally. Torian very, very. Watson. Yeah, Torian Watson, Connie Watson. Again, it's Epic Stitch and Print. Um, out there is dope. I I put all of the information into the into the uh description but it's super super dope it's nice it is super nice so we got a uh, we got merch coming on a new website we got booking information we got all of that let me go ahead and get the housekeeping out of the way thank you guys for continuing to rock with me shout out to my bag chasers uh link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat we got the dc meetup this saturday one thing that i make sure that i do is I make sure that I tap in and I reach out and I go and visit all of my people in every city every single month. I am in every city that I can think of, and I let you guys vote for it in the Patreon. We got the Mastermind session that's coming up very, very soon. It's going to be dope. We got the meetup in D.C. That's going to be sick. We got a Patreon exclusive video dropping tomorrow or Friday. Before I fly out, the Patreon exclusive is going to be dropping. Um, we got so much going on, and it's so much information. It's millions and millions of dollars worth of game. Make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned into the top of the chat. And then if you want to book a personal coaching session with me, plenty of people do, and they benefit significantly. Just negotiated a deal or helped negotiate a deal this morning that was absolutely incredible. And that went so well. He booked an emergency session with me for this morning because I, you know, I try to section off my time. So I made sure that I got up a little bit or I stopped what I was doing and got up a little bit earlier to get some work done so I can still get my calendar together. I spoke with him. We brokered a deal. We got some stuff done. And that was absolutely awesome. So shout out to all of the Patreon members, the people that continue to hold me down, the people that that take care of me. Everybody that's viewing the video, hit a like for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel. We continuing to run the numbers up while everybody else is talking. We doing the work. Big Shot Ammo says, uh, um, what do he say? Good morning, y'all. Question, do you know Marcus Jackson, Jackson from IT at GM? I am not familiar. I'm not sure. Uh, tell me how he knows me. Email me and let me know what's going on. Derek T says, uh, he says, uh, Mississippi stand up as the club girls say. <laughs> you got to say it. I'm not doing you it. You got to say it. Shout out to Teach Hanley, the sponsor of this show. 30% off your first order plus a free gift. Hey, Derek T tried to get me with you that gotta- fireball. You say it. <laughs> you say it. You got to say it. You always try to get me to say something. Brandon Waiter says, uh, can I bring my fiance to the D.C. meetup? You absolutely can. Uh, Bag chasers, uh, spouses are welcome. Uh, Girlfriends are welcome and girlfriends of the guys that bring them. In addition to uh, girlfriends of the girls, your homegirls. Bring your homegirls. They are more than welcome. Bring as many as you want. Uh, They are welcome. But we do want to. Keep it practically Patreon members only. I'm, I'm assuming that if people rock with you, then they must be good peoples because the people that's a part of my tribe is good peoples. But we always want to make sure that we have the best environment for people to network, kick it, have drinks, have conversations, and for me to be able to pour into. So DC is going to be lit. Matter of fact, I ain't even booked my hotel yet, but I'm doing it today. Look at Rita. 
I'm doing it today. I'm doing it today. So again, shout out to all of the super chats. Shout out to the Patreon members. Shout out to everybody that take care of me, the cash apps, the Venmos, all of that. I love you guys. I appreciate you for supporting the platform. And although you don't know the number, I'll probably share it with my Patreon members. Thank you for continuing to help me hit milestones on YouTube. I love you guys. Anything else before we get started with the show? I'm, I'm just excited. cruising. I was doing housework around this mug yesterday. Mm-hmm. Rita was uh kicked her feet up. Well, actually, Rita was helping me for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh it was pretty pretty much interesting. Very, very interesting. So uh <laughs> I'm gonna give you a choice. What do you want to start off with the the toxicity or the money? Well, yesterday you said you should save the money for last. So you want to do the money last? Yeah. All right. So we're going to get into the the good news last so we can get the people on their way. And we're going to get into the toxicity first. So first things first, shout out to um, what's their name? Let me double check and see what this couple's name is. Their name is Saucy and Honey. I wonder which one of these people right here is saucy and which one is honey. I would hope that the girl is honey. So he's saucy? Well, no, maybe the girl <laughs> should be saucy. I don't know. What do you mean? Which one is saucy and honey? Both I mean, of them are I girl names. You, I, but I call you honey, so. You call me honey, but I'm my nickname ain't honey <laughs> out here in these streets. <laughs> Shout out to uh, saucy and honey. <sighs> they did a 24-hour Target challenge. Overnight char- at Target challenge. Uh, I call it the seven year challenge because Target and wherever it is that they was. And I have not read the article. I have not reviewed the video. You sent it to me. People were sending this to me all the time. But they decided that they was going to do the seven year challenge. Yeah. YouTube couple. The the technical challenges they was going to do the 24 hour at Target challenge. But I call it the seven year challenge because the police over there said we're not playing on games with y'all and we want to possibly give y'all seven years in prison as a result of it. That's a long time. This is a bag fumblers challenge. And I want to absolutely enter these this saucy and honey. I don't know which one is saucy and which one is honey yet, but I want to enter saucy and honey into the uh <laughs> into the bag fumblers of the month possibly of the year because seven years is no joke Mm-mm. you know the interesting thing about it and i'm gonna go over this in a little bit um i think the interesting thing about this whole thing is this is one of the reasons why i stopped doing a lot of the stuff that i was doing on youtube earlier when i used to go through abandoned buildings and all of that other type of stuff. You know, I had some very, very close calls. And I was thinking to myself, eh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this one up because I feel like I've already won. And the thing is, is it's a couple different questions that I want to um, go into. And one of the questions is, is it worth it, the clout chasing? Mm-mm. The second question that I want to ask is, how do you know when you won and when to walk away? And I know this is a bad comparison, but it reminds me of bank robbers. And a lot of the bank robbers, some of them get away early and then they keep doing it and then they Mm -hmm. keep doing it and they keep doing it until they get caught. And it's like, I don't want to be the one stuck holding the bag at the end of the conversation. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like. You know, when do you walk away? When is enough enough? And when do you, you know, say, yo, I won or maybe this isn't worth it? That's the thing that I'm always wondering. Right. So we're going to go ahead and get into the saucy and honey. Again, I don't know who's saucy. (laughs) I don't know who's honey. Right. But I want to get into the saucy and honey video. Right. And we're going to review this video. We're just going to review it a little bit. I don't mind. I actually want to just kind of have it playing in the background, so to speak. And again, make sure you guys subscribe to the Patreon link is in the description um, as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I kind of just playing in the background a little bit. Let me see this. Let me go ahead and mute that. We're going to make sure we uh, turn that down. So this is what they did. They, They still uploaded the video, right? They got arrested. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I don't know if that's saucy. I don't know if that's honey, but this is them. Oh my God. Doing too much. 
doing too much already, Rita. So let me turn this up a little bit. Look, recording people, recording the employees. Now they walking around in a store. What do you think about this so far, honey? So he's saucy. So he's saucy. I, I, and call, you got, <laughs> I called it. And you got honey. I said it. I said it. <laughs> I'm not about to go through this whole video, yo. Hold on. I got to hear that again, that intro. I'm about to pull up their channel real quick. <laughs> Is this something that our daughter would watch or no? Probably. Is it? Probably. Let me read the article really quick. Probably. Well, hold on. Let's challenge. Let's hear them do their intro. <clears throat> I want to hear them do their intro real quick. And then um, we can get into exactly what happened with them. Okay. Okay, you guys. Sorry we're rushing through this intro, but it's 937 at. Oh. Okay, you guys. Sorry we're rushing through this intro. It's 937. It's 937 at night. Okay, and Target is about to close, you guys. We are about to spend the night in Target. Look We're going to spend overnight Look at him. in Target. Target closed at 10. <sighs> All right. I'm going to let them go ahead and do their thing, right? Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. So let me read this really quickly. I'm going to let them play right here because, you know, I don't, I don't do annoying. I don't do annoying. So I'm going to go ahead and let them do their thing in the middle of the thing, and I'm going to read the charges. I'm going to read exactly what happened here, okay? You ready? Yep. All right. Uh, a Pennsylvania, a couple in Pennsylvania were surprised at the legal trouble they found themselves in after they tried to spend a night inside of a Target to film a YouTube video. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Johnson LaRose, I guess that's saucy, and uh, his girlfriend Charlotte... Here, let's do this. Let's do this. Hold on. Let's do this. Oh, this is so sad. This is very, very sad. And honestly, I mean, I'm reviewing the video and I don't want anything to happen to him. But let's just do this. Let's do this. Uh, what is it? Johnson LaRose. Oh, we don't want to get too far into the video ahead of time. That's them trying to hide. But Johnson LaRose and his girlfriend, Charlotte Fisher, uh, co-run the YouTube channel Saucy and Honey. The channel has roughly 21,000 subscribers and features the couple doing viral challenges like pranking each other. Oh, wow. That's a new, <laughs> new concept. Uh, in one video they posted on February 21st titled 24-Hour Overnight Challenge and Target caught. Hey, do these people not realize that they got charges pending against them? Like you don't put up evidence against yourself. Like, is it that deep for the views? Is it that deep for the for the clout? Honestly. Mm. Go ahead, honey. No, no, no. Go ahead. Because I kind of read a little bit, but I don't remember what happened. So I don't want to say. All right. So here, here. Let me pull it up. Let me let me let them play so you can see what Saucy and Honey um, are talking about. I may regret this one day. They may turn out to be these big old YouTubers or whatever like that, right? But uh, they filmed themselves uh, walking into a Target 30 minutes before it closed and then hiding in order to stay in a store overnight. Uh, they say, guys, do not attempt to do what we're attempting to we're, we're attempting at home. We are entertainers. We are risking trespassing. I don't know what else can happen after that. If I get a fine or get arrested, I don't really know. I don't really care. Cap. They didn't know that they was really going to get a fine and arrested. Oh, here, let's see what they talk about. That's not a good look. It's not smart, guys. It's not a good look. Anyways, so uh, to continue, <laughs> to continue. Um, oh my gosh, look at them. They think that this is so funny. They think that this is so cool, guys. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Oh, Rita, 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 honey, 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 check this out. So, um, anyways, they added that they wouldn't be stealing anything from Target and supplied their own water bottles and snacks, as well as wipes and mason jars, should they need to use the restroom or the bathroom. The couple set up a fort 
um, out of product boxes on a bottom shelf until the store lights went off and then they wandered around the aisles filming themselves. Then at 8 a.m. the next day, LaRose and Fisher left Target. In addition to uploading a video that showed footage of them in the Target after hours, Fox 29 Philadelphia reported that officers were called to the store at 3 a.m. the night they slept over after an alarm went off. Mm -hmm. So, of course, an alarm tripped. Uh, police said they searched the building but did not find anyone. The next day, however, after learning about the alarm going off, Target employees watched security footage and saw the couple walking around the store after hours with their phones out, presumably um, LaRose and Fisher. Well, now we know it's LaRose and Fisher because here they are doing the Target challenge. Uh, Sir Shy says they're going to get sick from that Target dust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Security footage allegedly confirmed that LaRose and Fisher did not take anything from the store. The footage also indicated that LaRose and Fisher left through an emergency exit at 3 a.m. That's what tripped off the alarm is the door. I thought in the beginning they said they left at 8 a.m. Um, they left through an emergency exit, setting off the alarm, and then returned to the store at 8 a.m. to finish filming. Mm, okay. So they they went through the emergency exit through the alarm. They probably got tired, mm -hmm. and then they came back to finish filming, and they wanted to act like they were still there for 24 hours, perhaps. Mm, okay. Let's hear what they're saying about it. Look at them. Why are they whispering if nobody's there? Right. <laughs> I don't understand. Thank you for shopping with us today. The health of you, your families, and our team members is our highest priority. That's why wearing a mask or face covering is strongly recommended for guests who are not fully vaccinated. <sighs> this old lady says she's going to be crying at booking. They already got arrested. Did y'all see their mugshot photos? I'm going to show it to y'all again. This is very, very stupid. Right, so, why, why are they whispering? Nobody is in there. Anyways, um, here's the charges. You ready? You ready? After they came back, they left at three and they came back at eight. Uh -huh. Here's the charges. Both LaRose and Fisher are facing charges of third degree criminal trespassing and conspiracy and were released on a $25,000 unsecured bill. Third degree trespassing is when someone unlawfully enters or remains in or upon a premise that isn't theirs, even if it's a public place like Target. Wow. You ready? You ready to continue? Mm -hmm. For the time being, LaRose and Fisher are not allowed to visit any Target stores in Pennsylvania, and their next hearing is March 24th. They oh, said they that, I mean, Target. no regrets, just living life and having fun. It's kind of sad that all of this came out of it. We were expecting a fine, nothing crazy, Fisher said, according to Fox 29. And now they're facing... Actually, they're they're being targeted, not targeted. Um, they're being told that they're facing seven years in prison. Whew. Definitely not worth it. And they ain't even staying there for the whole 24 hours, so they don't even count. But they getting the views, though. They getting the views. Is it worth it? Here, here check this out. Check this out. So this is the sentiment. Um... The police said that it became a little bit bigger of an investigation trying to find out, find out what they were doing. Was there something criminal? Um, hold on, hold on. They say when you go to a burglary call, you have a heightened sense of awareness. Look at them. Hold on. Oh, my God. They should have did the bust it down oh challenge. God. He might room. have, but they're not gonna record that part. So check this out. Check this out. Hold on. This is what the police said. Ain't even nothing to do in there. No. I'd rather go in the daytime, put on some target uh outfits, some right. employee outfits, and pretend that I'm an employee. Hold on, let's see what they're saying. I'm trying to figure out if we're gonna be safe by ourselves all night, or are there gonna be people like popping up at us? Anyways, um, the two claim that they were inside the Target all night, which A, is a cap. They lying. Which means that 
YouTubers be capping all the time. They was at the Target all nights, but police say they left on an emergency exit around 3 a.m., which is what tripped the alarm. And then they returned to the store at 8 a.m. to resume the video. So the police outed them, uh, messed yes. up their little video, <laughs> made them seem like they was in there all night, and they really wasn't. Um, yeah. They wandered around the store for hours with their phones out. They didn't take anything. It became a little bit longer of an investigation. Um, the police said it could have ended up much differently. They say when you go to a burglary call, you have a heightened sense of awareness. Suddenly you see somebody in there or maybe they get spooked and run. And our officers are well trained, but it's not a great situation for anybody, which is true. That's true. Because they, they could have got they could have got uop shebanged, right? Yep. They weren't out to harm anybody, but we want to they said they want to make sure that this don't happen again and they gotta make an example out of us. Dang. Um This is insane. They facing seven years in prison now, possibly. I don't think that they're going to get seven years in prison. No, probably not. But. Like you said, they got to make an example. Let me pull up their channel to see exactly how they made, what they made out of this. Let me see something. Because first, they're going to cap and act. Surprise me, Uber, please. First, they're going to cap and act like they. You're going to take me into the world of the scary work. I want to see the part where they act like they've been there again. Empire, quick update. Pussy is knocked out over there. Look at him. Cap. I sleep. They probably let Cap him in. Him. Look at him. Why are they acting like they they were sleeping there all night? Because man, they gotta. Uh, and the police outed him already. They gotta do the. Why are they acting like the they been there all night? He gonna look. He waking up. <sighs> Have I been asleep all night? <laughs> <laughs> It's 8.42 in the morning. Oh, no. Come Aww. on, fam. Dang, too bad. If the police wouldn't have said nothing, people would have believed it. People would have believed that they really had been there all night, but they really left at... Uh... Yeah, if the police wouldn't have said nothing. Hey, why she capping like that, though? Look, hold on, hold on. Check it out. Check it out. Look at him like how you wake up. Oh my God! Somebody get me a Razzie award. Let me tell you something. If they had actually stayed and did the challenge and not left out through the emergency exit, they probably wouldn't have got caught. No, because they wouldn't have tripped the alarm at three a.m. Exactly. So if they had actually done the challenge, then they would be fine. You are absolutely right, honey. You are absolutely right. Look, look. Watch this. Look at him. <laughs> It's 8.42. I can't take it. Oh, my God. Look at this. The same way you just got back in there at 8 o'clock in the morning is the way that you're going to get out. <laughs> this is the most cap. The police just straight up out of them. I cannot believe what people will do. Just to try to get famous. Why, Jake? To help with you, your families, and our team members, it's our highest priority. That's why wearing a mask. Look. We're going to act like we're getting out now. We're fucking outside. You guys. We're fucking outside. We just successfully spent. I can't read it. I can't do it no more. I get y'all want to see what the face of a criminal look like. Y'all want to see what they really did. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all want to see what they really did. You want to see what they really did, honey? Mm -hmm. This is the face of an unsuccessful criminal. Let me show y'all. This right here. This is the face of unsuccessful criminals, ladies and gentlemen. Right there. This is what they really look like. He not happy about that. He was on his way to work. He had his tie on. He was going to get to his job. And now look at him. He had to do a booking photo. He said, I can't believe I let this monkey hoe talk me into going to Target and doing a Target challenge. And now I'm freaking arrested. That's what they really did. They didn't know Target had cameras. 
they they but didn't I know the police was going to release that to the people. To figure out though is okay, even with the cameras, and they saw them walking around. Maybe Filming I missed a whole it in felony. How did they know it was them? How did they know who was with them? How did they figure out their names and stuff and where to go? Because they probably just went on the internet and looked up Target Challenge. Hmm. They can watch them through the whole cameras, the whole security cameras. Yeah, and, no, but I'm and, saying, like, you don't know them personally, so how do you know their names is what I'm saying? And where to, like, you, you know. Rita, what I'm you'd be surprised the amount of information that's available on the internet. Yeah, Obviously, we all know, you know, whatever. That's him. He not happy about it. At least she got her, her uh, lips greased up. She trying to get famous. And uh, that's the face. The face of people that's going to film a whole felony walking around in Target and possibly facing seven years. Hopefully they don't get seven years because I don't want them to get seven years or something that they ain't even like. No. They was just trying to get famous on YouTube. But again, this begs the question, how much is too much? How much is too much? How much clout, clout chasing do you? They posted the whole video. I guess they figured they might as well leave it posted. Let me look at their channel and see how how many, see how many more subscribers they got. An extra two thousand subscribers. The video is 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 pretty pretty popular. See, they got one hundred thirty four thousand views. They only got three point three point five k likes. The likes at least should be at ten thousand for this. So I mean. I don't know. Let me see what what the other channels. I guess it's worth it if they actually get all of the visibility to come along with it. They got twenty two thousand. I put period blood in my boyfriend's face. You know this is so ca so. Look at her. I can't do it, Rita. I can't do it. Who is is that, is that her queen, honey? It look like it. Is she honey. She got a wig on in this one. Let me see what the other stuff then did really quickly. I finally got a BBL. He loves it. Yeah, they trying too hard. Yeah. This is too much. It's too much. It's too much wanting to be famous. Um, I can't do it. And you know, it's so funny because like I'm looking at some of my old videos, like right here or whatever. Mm hmm. And this is the uh, the VIP casino one. Hold on, let me do this. Um, that got 1.6 million views. But like right here, the climbing through the Pontiac Silverdome, it got 667, 676,000 views. And um, let me see. 12,000 likes. Yeah, 12,000 likes. And 3,000 comments. Let me go back for a little bit. This got 18,000 likes, 1.6 million views, uh, 6,000 comments. Do you know that I used to comment and respond to every single comment that was left for me back then when I was uh, working hard? This was three years ago. See, look, commented on every video. Or every every everything almost. Reply, 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 reply. I was out here working. I was getting it. But that's 1.6 million. But the point that I'm making is that I remember when I used to do these videos all the time, right? Um, that's the Pontiac Silver Dome one. And I had the police come and I heard them police sirens. I'm like, I'm up out of here. Let me see some of these other ones. Thirty-three thousand. Oh, here's some over here too. Some other explorer videos that I used to do. Unexpected encounter with a visitor. I had that dude that was in there that I had walked in there. Mm -hmm. When I quit my job back in 2019, deserted American Motors place, all of this. other. A lot of people found me from these videos. That's when I bought my first Rolex back five years ago. So for those of y'all that's just getting y'all little time pieces, please don't come to me talking about Anton just not getting it. I've been buying and I've been stunting on y'all for a long time now, please. Do you know this is one of my first videos, the quick tips, seven years ago? Dang. Man, honey, we did a lot of a lot of great content here. Mm -hmm. I had the Lexus back four years ago. That's me abandoning the, uh, the Fisher body plant. 
That's me climbing 16 floors of the abandoned Lee Plaza. But the point that I'm making with these videos and stuff like that is that um, you got to know when you won. And I remember when I gave up doing the exploration videos. Thank God. And you used to be worried every single time. I, but I was exploring way before I had got on YouTube. And I just incorpor incorporated that as a part of my life. But I was still always worried because I had corporate positions and stuff like that. And I didn't want to get in trouble and all of this other type of stuff and so on and so forth because I had to start filming it. And the interesting thing about that is at some point I was like, you know what? It's time to transition away from it. Yeah, we doing numbers. Yeah, we getting we getting money. Yeah, we I've been getting money for a long time, right? I still license a lot of those videos out, which is a lot of the money that I make on YouTube is licensing some of that content out. But the thing about it is just that at some point you got to say, "Yo, I won." Mm -hmm. I won. Why do I have to keep doing something until I get caught and catch a whole felony or get arrested? Right. I was one of the last people that filmed the Pontiac Silverdome. Mm -hmm. how much money how many views how many subscribers do you get before you say okay i got it i won it's time to transition people be hitting me up today like yo anton i still want you to when you going to go in i'm never going to explore another video no, not and i'm not that. about to explore no abandoned building like i'm not doing that i'm cool i'm good i had got an invitation to explore the palace of auburn hills when the pistons moved from it back to downtown and even though I had, and when they was about to tear down Joe Louis Arena for the Red, Red Wings, and I didn't even want to do it with the invite, the official invite to do it because I just felt like it was too dangerous. Mm -hmm. I had gotten, I had got too much money by then. And it was like, yo, I'm straight. So at some point, my point is, is that you got to, the last Explorer video, do you remember what happened to me? I was wondering if you was going to get to that. I'm sure you was going to tell it. Go no, ahead. You I, wasn't, can tell it. I wasn't going to say anything. I don't I'm even know if you know what I'm about to say. Go ahead. Say what I did. Say what happened to me. Uh, When the when you went through the floor. The last Explorer video <laughs> that I did. And it was, um, I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Indiana yep. I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And that was earlier this year, last year. It was something like that. It, was, it was recently. last year. Um. I went for it one more time. I actually didn't even expect to explore or nothing like that. And I'm walking through and I was going in through an abandoned church, one of the famous churches there. Next thing you know, I'm going through the floor. My whole leg, half of my body is in the floor. Leg hurting, all that kind of junk. I had to go to the doctor, make sure I ain't get stabbed by nothing and all that other kind of crap. It's I was like, you know what? That's God telling me, Anton, you done. Time to give the people the game on how it is that you lived your life and how you need to go ahead and do things differently. You got to know when you won. You got to know when you won. And these people, people are too busy clout chasing to be able to understand that they, you don't need to be in all of that. It's okay to pull it up. Well, hopefully after this stunt, they won't do anything else. I don't <laughs> even know if I, um, hold on. Let me see something. Fort Wayne. And time. I spelled it wrong. Was it Fort Wayne? It wasn't Fort Wayne. Mm -mm. It was um. It was where the Jackson Gary. Came from. Yeah, because I had went to the Jackson Five house and all of that. It was Gary, Indiana. It wasn't Fort Wayne. It was Gary. Uh, Sir Shaz says. Um, that Silverdome video gave me goosebumps. It was a dope video. It was a super dope video. self engineer said, God said Anton can't explore Mortal Kombat levels anymore. I was done. My leg was hurting. All of that. It was Gary, Indiana. Yep, it was Gary. Daniels. I just want to see if I can pull up the part where I went through the floor. Yep, that's it right there. That's it. Very fragile because there's no rules. Look at this foolishness. Elements have gotten in here. When was that? That's where I fell to the floor. Nobody might find you if you're incapacitated or knocked out or whatever. At their final service when they close. Look at that. Went right through the floor. When was that video? This was uh, 
I don't know. I put chapters and everything. This was, I don't know what don't say. It had to be fairly recent though. Had to be fairly recent though. It don't say on the on the clip, but it had to be fairly recent. No more urban exploration for Anton. No more. I'm done. I'm done. That's it for me. No more. <laughs> uh, Saucy probably lost his nine to five over the stunt. Possibly. I hope not. Absolutely. So Dang. we don't want anything to happen to him, but we do want to make sure that they, you know, we don't, you know, they got to learn the lesson, but hopefully they don't. They don't learn the lesson the hard way, all right? So Anton is done with his exploration videos. Don't call me. Don't ask me <laughs> if I'm going to do another exploration video. I'm telling you no right now, all right? So uh, another criminal thing uh, that I want to focus on, and again, make sure you guys subscribe to the Patreon. We got the Patreon meetup happening this weekend. It's gonna absolutely going to be dope. Patreon exclusive video. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Um. Yeah, it was very unstable. Y'all can go back and watch that video if y'all just want to watch that. But it was very, very unstable. Honey, tell me what you think about this picture. Tell me what you think about that picture of that girl right there. Um, it just looked like a girl just taking a selfie, feeling cute. Taking a selfie, feeling cute? Mm -hmm. That girl is a demon. <laughs> this girl really? is a whole is demon. She? She's a whole demon. You want me to? I'm gonna I'm give you the. I'm gonna give you the headline, and then you can tell me what it is that you think about her. All right. Uh, new details emerged Tuesday about the sick kidnapping scheme that left a New York City man burned, gagged, and on the brink of death as the alleged honeypot charged um, with luring him was indicted. This girl lured this guy in. Mm. And they tortured him overnight in order to try to extort $100,000 over him. This chick right here, a wow. real girl, lured a dude in, and then they extorted a dude trying to get money out of him for $100,000. People are sick. Y'all better watch these hoes. These hoes for the streets will have you tangled up. So let me, let me share with you the actual details of the story as a matter of fact i'm gonna make you first on this let's get what rita's reaction is you stop me look we're gonna try something new i didn't even anticipate doing this we're gonna try something new today you ready mm -hmm. all right stop me when you're ready new details what emerged when, I'm ready? when you want to comment you could just take over oh. you ready okay new details emerged uh let's do it like this about the sick kidnapping scheme that left the New York City man burned, gagged, and on the brink of death as the alleged honeypot charged with luring him was indicted. Police found the 24-year-old... Okay, stop. Why are they calling her a honeypot? We're going to get to that. The police found the 24-year-old victim. He was a 24-year-old guy mm -hmm. who was allegedly kidnapped on February 7th, wrapped in, furniture, wrapped in a furniture moving blanket. Mm -hmm. You know how they wrap your furniture mm -hmm. up? Um, with tape covering his nose and mouth Dang, inside of a van parked in Queens. Shout out to New Yorkers. Y'all been losing two days in a row. Um, according to sources and prosecutors, one of his knife toting tormentors was also in the vehicle. At the time, two of his kidnappers had taken his car, a black Honda Accord to a ransom drop with the victim's brother in the Bronx. The victim told the cops that the men were armed with a handgun and also a cell phone. That's her. That's the chick that set him up. So this is what happened. This is what happened. They were on their way to a ransom drop. And that's when the police got to him. I'm assuming it's a result of whoever it was that they had torturing him was saying, okay, let's go to the ransom drop. They probably called the police and they arrested the people. Mm -hmm. All right. The vicious fiends had demanded 100000 from the victim's horrified brother. So they was trying to extort him out of $100,000, mm -hmm. who was forced to watch as his sibling was cut with a knife on a grisly FaceTime call. So they FaceTimed the brother and was like, yo, we're going to extort you out of $100,000. She the one that set him up. And they had him on FaceTime. Mm. 
That's her. Hey, girl. Y'all better watch these hoes on the gram. Y'all better watch them. You ready to continue? Yeah. Okay. The kidnappers who wore masks on a video called from a blocked number. Police went to the drop site but didn't see the victim's car or anyone suspicious. Prosecutors have said the young man was barely breathing when he was found. Followed a, following a twisted 24-hour torture session where he was stabbed and beaten. The twisted saga began after the victim connected with a pretty brunette over Instagram. <laughs> they sending them DMs. Y'all got y'all big time rollies on. You want to show your bus down. You're showing all of your bags. You're throwing money in the strip club. You're riding in that big body bands. That Oh, you want to ride in the big body bands, huh? You want to ride in the big body band. Okay. All right. Cool. Check it out. But uh, so I wonder what made them reach out to the brother, though, instead of the actual person with the money. The person with the money was getting tortured. No, no, no. That, that was his brother that was getting tortured. Oh, what do you mean? Why did they reach out to the brother? So they tortured the brother. They tortured the brother to get money, to get out, money of his, out of his, his brother. brother. Right. Yeah. But why they just didn't torture the man who they want? Well, if you want to get money out of me, then they would come after you. That's true. Don't try right? that. Oh, no, you're going to be a dead man walking. <laughs> and I do not negotiate with terrorists. I'm going to just tell you that right now. I don't negotiate with terrorists at all. I may look like 2022 is a good year and we turn it over <laughs> a new leaf. But please don't turn me back into that guy. Um, so anyway, the Twisted Saga began after the victim connected with a pretty brunette over Instagram, never suspecting that he was allegedly being targeted because she and her accomplices Thought he was a pretty, thought he was a wealthy prey. Mm -mm -mm. Right? Uh, Valerie Rosario, 22, who allegedly lured him to a Bronx apartment. Let me show you what the apartment is. Now, this man should have never went into a side. He should have never went inside of this place. Heck, you know, first of all, I'm not. Look at we, them gates. We just met on Instagram. That looked like I'm a not, death trap. It does. And they just met. I'm not uh, coming over. Yo, what are you talking about? That's what the dudes is trying to get. They're trying to get that box. Every mm -hmm. single day, dudes debate me on the Lapeef Let's Talk show mm -hmm. and my overnight late night streams that Anton is not aware of what's happening in the streets. And I'd be like, yo, you got to exercise a level of dick discipline. Don't get yourself lured into so that you place. That desperate that you're going to go inside of there? That looked like a death trap. It does. So, but I mean, if he live in New York also... That's how a lot of the places look. So it's a lot of places. It might be normal for him. I'm not going into no. Nope. I mean, nope. I'm, I'm not, but nope. You especially know what? If I, we just met. We need to meet in public. When me and you go out on a regular basis, how do I drive? Crazy. What 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 do I be doing? What do I, what kind of speed do I be doing? Be real. Very fast. Over a hundred sometimes. Why do I do over a hundred miles an hour? In case anybody is trying to follow us home, they can't I am up. doing a hundred thousand miles per hour for an extended period of time. If I see another car behind me, he gonna have trouble. <laughs> he gonna have trouble. It's just fat flat. Like I don't play no games. I'm always watching over my shoulder. I'm always paying attention. I'm always seeing what's going on around me. I'm not playing no games whatsoever at all. And they say, Anton, you just overly paranoid. Okay, well, tell that to this guy in the Bronx that just got tortured for 24 hours. Exactly. Anyway, met in public. And who just got $100,000 sitting around? Who got $100,000 sitting around? They but anyways, um, the saga twit, the twisted saga began after the victim connected with the pretty brunette over Instagram, never suspecting that she was allegedly targeting because he was wealth, because she thought he was wealthy. She lured him to the Bronx apartment on February 7th, was indicted in the sickening case and set to be arraigned in Manhattan Supreme Court next month. The, indict the indictment charges were not made public, but prosecutors initially charged her last week with attempted murder and kidnapping. Hey. This little thing, this little funky thing. Um, she was arrested March 10th after cops tracked her to the Bronx home of the aunt of one of her alleged co-conspirators um, who has also been charged. Prosecutors say Rosario allegedly coaxed the victim, a complete stranger, to an address in, on Marble Hill Avenue in the Bronx after they connected on Instagram. He went to meet the low, he went to meet the Lower East Side con woman, believing they were linking up for a romantic encounter. You ain't that naive, fam. Mm -hmm. um, you're supposed to Google the location and click on show outside. <laughs> Agreed. 
I know you could do that. Um, but when he arrived, three men barged in. So he had got to the place. She probably took her little clothes off. He probably took his pants down, and that was his cue. Three men barged in and pistol whipped him. Mm. Rosario and the accomplices then allegedly stripped the victim, placed him in a bathtub, poured flammable substances on him, mm. and burned him with the flame all over his body. These are sick people. Oh my gosh. Absolutely atrociously sick people. Dang. Crazy. They also tormented him with a knife, striking him about the legs, back, and body. Seven hours later of to- seven hours of torture later. Seven hours of torture later. Um, the group of sadists. Oh, they got a way of describing these people. <laughs> Move the victim to an address, Queens, um, in his own car. Look at her. I wonder how many people they probably already did this. To. I was just about to say that. Police tracked him down to the back back of van back of the van parked there and arrested another of the alleged accomplices. Vargas, 24, was arraigned February 9th and also remanded in the custody. His next court date is March 22nd. So her, this honeypot, her right here, this one with the American flag on, hey girl, lured the man off of Instagram over to here, put him in a bathtub, tortured him, set flames to his body, here, let me show you what this little funky thing is doing again. Set flames to his body. People had three men pistol that. whipping him, stabbing him up, torturing me, torturing him over 24 hours, asking for a hundred thou. Mm. That ain't even no money. You can go to work for a year and get that, and you ain't got to worry about going to jail for the rest of your life. Y'all better beware of these hoes on Instagram. That's all I got to say. What are your thoughts, Rita? That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. But I can't believe that men are so desperate for some sex that you just met this girl and then you just going to show up to this random place and just go inside. Like that was, I'm not saying that he deserved it because he did not. Of course he didn't deserve it. But you got to protect yourself at all times. He should not have even went in there. Protect yourself at all times times absolutely never let your guard down forget these holes exercise a level of dick discipline and stop finding yourself in a position to where you got to be compromised right at all it's not a good look all right make sure you guys subscribe to the patreon hit a like for the youtube algorithm link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat if you need to book me for a personal coaching call go to my website antondaniels.com a lot of this merch is going to be on the site come hopefully late april when we launch the website we got the dc meetup the patreon exclusive meetup happening on saturday and it's going to get popping but speaking of instagram speaking of instagram did you know that nfts i know that's something that look at rita she looking like look did you know that nfts is coming to instagram according to mark zuckerberg a couple different things that i want to go over here right um because I want to go over NFTs coming to Instagram and I want to make, I want to alert y'all to how much, because I just helped somebody secure a position over at Facebook. Shout out to you family. I want to tell y'all and show y'all exactly how much money they making over there. Black man on filter says Anton, um, Anton, you carry that heat with you when you out. If I did, I wouldn't tell the people. I wouldn't say it out loud. Shout out to Black Man Unfiltered. Thank you for the five ball. I appreciate you, family. But um, yeah, NFTs are supposedly coming to Instagram. And Mark Zuckerberg specifically spoke about this, right? So here, let me share this article with you guys because this is the type of stuff that helps me to make more informed decisions as to the companies that I want to invest in. All right. Um, let's set this up really quickly. Speaking video, uh, speaking via video video link at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas. Let's do that. Um, on Tuesday, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced that Instagram is working on bringing NFTs, non fungible tokens, to its platform in the next several months. For a lot of you guys that are not familiar and don't understand what an NFT is. It is uh, fortified and backed up by blockchain technology, and it allows you to be able to basically have digital assets that you're able to track 
and it's a one of one in which you would own that digital asset forever. OpenSea is one of the platforms. OpenSEA is one of the platforms that are dealing with NFTs. But I will also warn you as a responsible person that most NFTs are overpriced and a scam. I don't care what they're telling you. Zuckerberg did not delve into specifics, but he said users would be uh, would be able to bring existing NFTs over to Instagram and hopefully over time be able to mint things within that environment. This world is going to go completely digital, honey. People that are just now understanding and getting on a the train, they're going to be left behind. Meta is not the first social media giant to tap into the NFT craze. Twitter launched a feature in January allowing iOS users on its own subscription service Twitter Blue to turn NFTs into their profile pictures. I seen that uh, Board Eight Yacht Club that Eminem bought. That was a part of his uh, Twitter profile. Twitter has not made any features that allow users to mint NFTs on its platform. Financial Times reported in January that Meta was working on allowing users to display NFTs as profile pictures. Two sources told the uh, Financial Times that the tech giant had discussed opening a marketplace for people to trade NFTs. Mm. They want to compete with OpenSea and all of that. I am invested in Facebook. I don't care what the share price is. I think that this company is going to absolutely completely take over the world. Uh, Zuckerberg's announcement plays into his broader ambitions for making Meta a metaverse company. The word metaverse, which is a term, um, describes a future vision of the Internet, which is primarily accessed through Im uh, immersive technology such as VR and AR headsets. You know what I'm going to work on before we go out of town? Mm. Getting set up so that I can do my coaching sessions in, uh, in, 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 in the metaverse. metaverse. I keep talking about it, but I've been so consumed mm -hmm. with doing work around here and stuff like that. Um, the other thing that I want to share with people before we uh, really start to deep dive into the, the thick of things is how much Facebook pays its en engineers, researchers, and product managers. Now, this is sort of meant as inspiration for you guys to be able to make the right decision as far as what it is that you want to get into and what careers you're supposed to be going into. So a lot of people, when they get on the call with me, and let me tell you what they say. Anton, I don't want to spend time. I'm 32 years old. I'm 40 years old. I'm 28 years old. I'm 26 years old, whatever, so on and so forth. I don't want to get my software engineering degree. I don't want to go back to school. I don't want to figure it out. I don't want to do it. I just want to work this job that I'm doing that's paying me $40,000 for the next 30 years. For the next 30 years. On average, people that have a degree specifically in a in a in a field in which they can really, really leverage to make a lot of money, make more than a million dollars than somebody that doesn't. This is a fact. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. This is not my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. People that have degrees on average make more than a million dollars in a lifetime than people who don't. Now, the question is. Not whether or not college is good for you, but are you picking the right field of study so you then won't be coming back to me talking about you running in the victim Olympics? But this is how much they make. If you want a big salary at Facebook, you're not an executive and you're not an executive or in the C-suite. Go for a job in engineering, marketing and or or communications. High level engineers can easily make a salary in the mid six figures, as can people at the director level and marketing and communications. But you got to get to the director level. It's not just people in marketing and in communications, mm -hmm. which is a very, very rare thing to do. According to a year's worth of Facebook pay data, insider pool information for more than 15,000 work visa applications the company filed with the U.S. government in 2021. An engineering manager, for instance, makes just under $350,000 a year. An engineering manager, let me say that again, makes just under $350,000 a year. A director of internal communications is earning $300,000 a year. And that's just salary. That's mm. just your base pay that has nothing to do with bonuses, nothing to do with equity, nothing to do with stock options, nothing to do with your ESPP. It has nothing to do with any of that. Nothing to do with your signing bonus. This is just base pay. I showed people my W-2 on the Patreon, and they said, what the f What the French cup? <laughs> what the French cup? This is real. People are taking this home every day. Every day. So let me just go through some of this. Engineering. 
Global operations engineer makes between one hundred forty-four and one hundred forty-nine thousand. Three D sensing and characterization engineer makes one hundred sixty thousand. Audio systems engineer makes two hundred nineteen thousand. ASIC engineer between one fifty-four one ninety. Engineering manager two ten. Integrity science engineer. I have no idea what that is, but their base pay. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is base pay. This has nothing to do with bonuses, signing bonuses, performance bonuses, um, retention bonuses, pay equity. None of that. This is just a base pay. This is what they need in order to be able to survive. OK, this ain't what they 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 out here tricking on. All right. Digital modeling engineer. One sixty eight certification compliance engineer. Two twenty. What is an antenna engineer? I have no idea what an antenna engineer is, <laughs> but they making 188,000. Sounds like an engineer is the way to go. Sounds like it. Security engineer up to 193. Tooling engineer 205. Validation a systems validation engineer 115. Um, program manager tooling 215. Product systems validations lead 230. 230. 275 software engineering manager front end engineer which is basically a front end web developer is 197 that's what you see in touch wow antenna engineer is basically what it says they work on antennas yep they design and develop antennas and other communication devices wow silicon physical design engineer 189 these people killing the game Enterprise engineer director, 342. They get into the bag. And y'all out here wanting to be rappers and basketball players, these people will, over their lifetime, make way more money than some of these people that ever get into the NBA. Application engineer, 215. Machine learning engineer manager, 241. Engineer manager, 247. Data centers, infrastructure, and supply chain. Don't I'm too, no, you're not. All you got to do is go through the classes. You know more than you think you do. Pre-construction planning manager, 197. Operations program manager, 196. Director of networking, 300,000. Mm. Facility operations director, 255. Y'all can get this. Graphic performance architect, 229. I don't see any salary, not one salary. Even a technical writer is making 140,000 base pay. I don't see one salary on here that's less than 120, 110, 115. That's the lowest that I've seen. Wow. Y'all see these numbers. Threat investigator, 161. Come on, y'all. These dudes is walking around with dad bods and killing it. <laughs> walking around with mom bods and absolutely murdering the game. All I see is big numbers. Global safety policy, 279. And then you got the victim Olympic role, the lead diversity research, $175,000 a year. Mm. So largely what I'm saying and what we're saying, ladies and gentlemen, is that there are big bags to be had mm -hmm. across the board. And if you are not out here grabbing it or at least putting yourself in a path or on a position to grab it, you are absolutely out of your freaking mind. Meanwhile, they trying to extort people on Instagram for $100,000 and putting their whole life on the line. And you can go and make that in a sign-in bonus. You can go and make that in a sign-in bonus. Uh, Michael Richardson says... Uh, DMD, DWDM engineer, 140,000 experience, entry 80,000. Do you know that we hired, um, we hired people right out of college making more than a hundred thousand dollars. We was giving them 15 and $20,000 signing bonuses right out of college, 22, 23 year old dudes. Gonna, and we giving them a, a, a bag, just college. giving them a bag. Wow. You know, my biggest thing. And then uh, I don't know if you have anything else that you want to add to this mm -hmm. before we. Uh, I don't have anything else. Before we deep dive. You know, my biggest thing that I try to emphasize to people on a regular basis, I do this day in and day out. I mean, I do this so much that I felt crazy, crazy that I canceled a show because I had to go and take care of some business on Monday. 
We do this day in and day out. Day in and day out. One of the most common questions that I'm getting lately from a lot of people in coaching calls and that's tapping into me and sending me emails. And again, link to the description. Links in the description to join the Patreon as well as in the in the top of the chat. And if you want to book me a personal call, go to my website, AntonDaniels.com, and we're going to get you popping. One of the big things that I hear people ask me all the time is, should I do a boot camp or should I just go to college? Should I just do a quick boot camp or should I just go to college? And I'm going to give you my answer for those of y'all that tap into me on a regular basis. Um... But the biggest thing that I want to emphasize to you guys is when I give you this answer, I'm giving it to you knowing that now when we jump on a call, you have more time to dedicate towards things that's actually going to add more value to your life than just answer this simple question. So when you call me now, you already got this answer and I'm going to tell you what the differences are. I'm an advocate for going to college. I am. I'm an advocate for going to college. You can do a boot camp, but if you're asking me what I would do, I would say go to college. Now, the boot camp gets you in the door, right? It shows your level of proficiency. Because there's such a shortage of jobs, they're making it wide open and the barrier to entry is a little bit lower. So it's almost like you just got to jump over a smaller hurdle in order to get into a job. Now, once you're in there, you can make as much money as you want, whatever, so on and so forth. But for me, I had higher aspirations. And so I didn't just want to go to a boot camp or something like that. I wanted to actually get a degree. Now, me going to community college, one of the benefits of going to the community college was that you actually can get the certifications with the exact same classes that you get in a degree in. So along the way, I picked up certain certifications and certificates in order to be able to validate how good I was at what I do. I'm not going to get into the deep dive of stuff because that's for the coaching calls. But at a large, to a larger extent, one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I got a degree is because my ceiling became much higher, right? First, actually, first few years, I went to community college, then I transferred over into a four-year university. The important thing that you have to understand is now the jobs that I am being vetted for and when somebody comes to me and say, Anton, we want to create a position for you or whatever – the barrier to entry, I don't have to worry about whether or not I got a degree in order to get that. If you want to just get into the field, cool. If you want to accelerate or eliminate the possibility that you have to jump over a bigger barrier, then go for the degree also. It may take a little bit longer and you can work while you're getting the degree also. But my point is, is that it depends on what it is that you want. For me, I want much more than the average person. I want it all. I want all the bags. I didn't just want the 150, 200, 250, 300 thousand dollar bag. I wanted the million dollar bag. I wanted that million dollar compensation package total overall. And so that's what I go for. And I don't want you guys having this mindset that you have to go for the minimum amount possible. And the minimum amount for us and the bag chasers and the Patreon group link is in the description is much higher than the minimum amount for everybody else. When I get on these panels on a regular basis, they always talking about, well, Anton, you got to speak for the majority. The census say that the average black man make between forty and $45,000 a year. Well, not none of them that I know. Not none of them that I know. Matter of fact, because you know that I don't just rock with black people, I have to include everybody in it. And so my standard and the median income for the people that I rock with is much, much higher. It's already in the six figures. And all of us are saying, yo, that's not enough to be able to raise a family of four because all of our lifestyle has obviously excelled to a higher level. The point that I'm making to you guys is, yes, there are bags to get. Yes, there are opportunities, plenty of them for you to be able to take advantage of. No, I'm not advocating for you to just do the minimum possible in order to get your foot in the door because I don't want you to just survive. I want you to thrive. A few months ago, I did a whole series on the importance of thriving, surviving, and then the other people that we don't even talk about, the duress mindset, which is the dusty dusties. And we invite everybody to become a part of the bag chasers because you got to start somewhere. And this ain't like your local church where they telling you to go ahead and get yourself together and then come to church. We telling you to come to church so we can get you together. My point is, is that when you're in a duress mindset, you complain about what everybody else is doing while you continue to suffer. 
When you start to survive, I largely equate that to being middle class is because you're not quite where you need to be and you want to live a better lifestyle, but you're right in the middle. And so you justify your existence from looking at everybody else and saying, but I'm better than them. But when you start to thrive, you have a completely different narrative, a completely different mindset as to how it is that you go about doing things and what success really looks like. Broke to me is being middle class because I can't go back to it. I can't go back to it. Can I do it? Yeah. Will I survive? Absolutely. Would I stay there? Never. Because I have a higher ceiling. I have greater growth potential than the normal everyday person because I already know too much. And there's no way I'm ever going to settle for leaving anything on the table. The greatest travesty that a human being can make is not just doing something against somebody else that's not good. But by not living up to your potential because you could have gave that to somebody else that was going to actually take advantage of it. Get, give it to me. I'll take advantage of it. I'll take yours, too. <laughs> I want everything that's coming to me. I want all the greatness. I want all the jewels. I want all of the experiences. I want all of the dopeness. I want everything that's great. Everything. All of it. Can you do a boot camp? Absolutely. Would I advise it? Not necessarily. Because I wouldn't tell you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Pay attention, make informed decisions, do the things that's actually going to add the most value to your life and stop settling for the minimum requirement because you have a greater ceiling than what it is that you've already set for yourself. Somebody told you you needed to compare yourself against regular everyday people. And I'm telling you, you need to compare yourself against billionaires because when you set the bar higher, you work much harder. And you reach further than you thought you was capable of. And then you start to unlock things you didn't even know was there. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I would like for you to also continue to rock with me. Make sure you hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I continue to make your week much better than it would have been had you not been here and gave you some motivation on how you can continue to level up, win, and place, your, place yourself way above what you thought you were by first divesting yourself against this mindset and the people that think like that, and then secondly, aligning yourself with a group of people that's going in the direction that you're going in. I love you. I appreciate you. Make sure you tap in. Again, the link to the Patreon is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I'm going to see you guys later, but I need you to do one more thing for me before we go. One more thing for me before we make sure, make sure you tell your family and friends because we don't want to be rich by ourselves. We want to continue to kill it, run the numbers up, run the checks up, and then we're going to absolutely pour into everybody else because first you got to fill your cup up before you start working on everybody else. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. Same time. Peace.